When you're wrong about nobody let her get beat up. And also, are know. you asking black men, I'm saying let's entertain it for the sake of okay. conversation. And also, are you asking black men to put their lives on the line for, for, would you put your life on the line for a woman you don't know and leave your children? Black woman? Yeah, black yes, woman. We don't right have now. a choice. That's part of being a man. Right now. Yes. And leave your daughters without a, without a father. Dr. King did it. Malcolm did no, it. No, I'm Malcolm asking, left. I'm asking Dr. Umar. If we're gonna tell black women that we can't do nothing with our boys, what else should she be willing to trust us with? Do you push that off on, what about the boy's father? Okay, You, you, you push it to the that. community, right? First what all, about his father? Okay, that's not our culture. Our culture is collectivism. If you're not there, I got to be. It's that simple. The reasons don't even matter. He ain't there. See, we like the scapegoat individuals because we don't want no collective accountability. How many response. kids have you personally, and I don't mean over the phone. Wow. How many? Too many to count. A lot of them. Too many to count. Do you Man, think, do you think you've touched more children than Dion? Sanders? I think it's very possible that I have. And I'm going strictly off of the feedback I get from young men. Meaning we're taking responsibility for the development of all the black boys in Nashville, then that young lady could never choose a wrong mate because we would never allow a wrong mate to exist. So whenever a black man says, it ain't my fault she got a baby by Pookie, Pookie shouldn't even exist. Because you don't put that on the same white people that we put the rest of this stuff on? So, huh? The same white people that we put all the systematic shit on. Uh -huh. We don't put that on them? Let me tell you why. And that's, and that, that's in a perfect world, I agree with that. But, but why the world got to be perfect for us to do that? Because, again, the black man is under attack, right? But that the, don't stop me from helping the youngin. Well, it do, we if, you, it do if you can't multitask. See, everybody ain't got we the kind of- We multitask when we be chasing that ass. Yeah, but that's, that kind of multitask is self-satisfying, right? That's a self, selfish, self-satisfying yeah. multitask, so that's a bit different. You're asking people to multitask and give, not get. Right. So it's a different circumstance. I, I see what you're saying. Right. I feel like we've grown extremely selfish. I don't think black men have the type of spirit that our ancestors had. You know, you got to realize we come from a legacy where black men gave their life for the community. I mean, literally widowed their wife and left their children fatherless for the people. And I look at us now where I can't even stay at a black school and help build this up. It's up there. It's up there. Ooh, we thank y'all so much, man. I appreciate that. It's up there. Their podcast. podcast live show was like, it was real cool. The host, he was asking a lot of like good questions for Umar to like, he was giving a lot of pushback for Umar to give his more, you know, more of what he had to say about the topics he had. My experience of the It's Up There live podcast show was amazing. I came because I met Loon. Next time you have a show, I definitely will be in attendance. And I was, I have my own podcast. So I'm definitely learning a lot from this man. King is giving me gems every time I see him. Um, I really enjoyed the It's Up There podcast live show. Um, I learned a lot. The It's Up There live podcast show was amazing. It was a good time and always informational and uh, the perfect date night for a Friday night. I think the It's Up There live podcast was phenomenal. Definitely a platform that I am so glad to be a part of. It was definitely enlightening and motivating and empowering. Oh, it was awesome. I am so glad. I had so many other things going on tonight, but I made it an, uh, 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 important. It was very important for me. It was also important for me to bring my grandson to share with everybody I know. Now niggas want to loom me to death. Salute, loom. Yeah, Salute. exactly. It's my man, loom. That's yeah, my man, too. Both looms. Old loom, new loom. <laughs> loom. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll, as much as you know, it's up there and it's stuck there, nigga. When it's up there, man, it's stuck there. Shut up. 
Mm-hmm. Right? You, the, the Farrakhans, the people that I look in and say, oh, all right, I, let's let, let, pull a notepad out, get some of that technique. Because there's, there's breath control, there's pausing, there's repeating, there's, mm-hmm. there's face, you know, there's so much that's happening. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm wondering who deposited the, the, anything. The, the, the only technique that I'm conscious of having borrowed from my predecessors is the need to pause yes. occasionally. Yes, so I important. It, I'll just go, yeah. and I won't stop. So I consciously try to yes. remember to pause. Yes. And that's probably more of a Frederick Douglass thing yes. than anything else. And because people have to take it in. They even with me, up. like, see, because even with me, when you try to get into that vibe, yeah. you know, it's like, I, at some point, I got to start talking to you like you listening. Uh huh. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. some people, they just talking. You got to talk to somebody like they're listening. Yes. You know, yes. and sometimes yes. when I need emphasis on something, I need to lay there for that. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, even in our communication today, today, you would say something like, uh, for your black liberation, and you'll just let that live. Mm-hmm. And I think those techniques, I just want you to know that people are watching those things, and you're, you're pouring into people indirectly just by... You, you, you know, spiritually, right, there's about five different major spiritual gifts. You have your clear cognizance. That's when information from the universe is downloaded automatically into your mind. You know it, but you don't know where you learned it. That's clear cognizance. When I speak, not all the time, but sometimes, clear cognizance will take over. And I'm saying things about things I've never learned nowhere. So it's coming directly from the ancestors. And I'll go back and look at a clip and say, how did I say that? And I didn't even know that. Yeah. So there's sometimes you get into a zone yeah. where it's not even you. Oh man, I love those zones. You, you follow, that's oh, the answer. Oh man, them zones there, when yeah. I, if I can get in a pocket on yeah. these boys, yeah. it's nothing like it. That's man. what I'm saying, it's not all the time, and you no. never know when it's coming. And it's magic, and yeah. you feel it as a speaker, as yeah. someone, yeah. you say, and you know when you're with Yeah, it. I got in my bag. You're like, I'm on not stopping. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah. take a break, we ain't taking no break. No, we can't. The ancestors yeah, are yeah, going yeah, to keep going. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the yeah. one thing I learned about public speaking, Public speaking taught me more than anything else. We have no control over the outcome. Because I walk into a certain lecture, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna tear this up tonight. It's the right sound, right building, right this. And it'll be a regular lecture. And then I'll go somewhere where I'm like, okay, this is just gonna be a regular little talk. It's my classics. All of my classics were unintentional. Mm. Every one, mm. the ones that people love, I'm like, damn. I never even thought that night was going to yeah. be that special. And it's never up to us. Yeah, and this is important for the young concert creators because they're watching us. But here's the thing, too. Um, as I'm going further and further, I just did Invest Fest with 20,000 people, right? And so when you come out and it's, and it's that many people, you look around like, what is this, right? And it's like you blow a circuit or you blow a fuse. You get it back, but for a brief second, it's almost like, what? Like June, yeah. it's like everything yeah. you was thinking, your thought process, but it eventually comes. It, it eventually comes back. Do you find yourself um, ever being in that mode? Because you speak so much now, I don't think you you may you may find yourself well, in. For it. me, the best speech is the first time they saw you, because there's no expectation. You feel me? If I'm going like uh, I'm going to Cameroon, Africa next week, right? I was in Brussels, Belgium last week. I've never been to Brussels. So there's no pressure because I know they know me from social media, but they never felt me in the person. Right. This is no pressure. Right. You know what the pressure is? When I've been in Nashville 10 times and y'all came back to see me that 11th, that's pressure because y'all know what to expect. Y'all seen it. And I got to give y'all a new fresh message and be even more dynamic I was the previous nine times. Yeah. So some people would say the more you come back to a city, the easier. Not for me. It's the harder. Yeah. You feel me? Like a place like Chicago where yeah. I spend a lot, New York where I spend a lot, it's pressure. Yeah. Because not only do I got to have a new message, I got to grab you every time better than I did the last time. And, and what I'm trying to do, right, because I'm ascending so fast. So I'm trying to figure out when now I'm conscious about this as, as I'm getting because it's so much money on the line. And anybody watching me, I got millions of people watch. I need y'all to know this. Pay attention to whatever you're doing. 
Right now, man, I'm finding myself trying to understand when I get those zones, I literally try to backtrack what that day was. Like, did I place myself there? Was it something I done before the show? Was it, nah. even though I know it's probably not because it never yeah. reenacts itself. Yeah. But it's like, I'm conscious on trying to grab that or create that environment mm -hmm. that puts me, have you found anything like that for you that something that puts you into a place where, like me, I went back the other day and, and I'm give you a second. Before you came, I'm like, I'm trying to fish. What what is that that gets my brain like? Cause sometimes, dude, my brain will go and it's like I'm on another. Yeah. It's another yeah. frequency. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I wanted to ask you. You know, I believe when you get to a certain level within your spiritual development, myself included, you'll be able to activate it at will. Mm. The reason we can't activate it at the, will yet, we not at that frequency yeah, yet. Yeah. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. When you get to that frequency, you'll be able to activate it at will, that zone. Yes. This is the athlete too, where they shoot a shot and can't miss. Right. Right, for five minutes, yeah. I can't miss. Yeah, I'm on. They in that zone. Yes. You went to a high, you went into your super conscious mind. Yes. Right? But we have to get there through the spiritual. The is there spiritual. anything that gets you there? Like, I seen you, is there anybody that maybe they argue with you and they play, who is he think he, or they insult your intelligence, or they. Not because it's all based on divine timing. It is. Right, so from an African perspective, we exist in two worlds. We exist in the physical, and we exist in the spiritual at the same time. We can't see what's happening in the spiritual. It could have been within the spiritual design for this day for you to access right. your God consciousness right. for that. You follow right. what I'm saying? Right. right. Because right. remember, we got our own plans. Our ancestors got a plan too. Right. And then God got a plan too. Right. So we think that when we wake up, we're just living our life as we want. No, your ancestors got a hand in it because you are a reincarnation of them. And then the most high, the universe has a design of its own. And this is why when you hear like Dr. King say, I want to do God's will, you got to tap into that. You got to tap into that. The highest form of expression is when what you want is the exact same thing God wants you to have. That's divine consciousness, and that's the purpose of life. And that's why I think that we as black people never get to where we're supposed to be, brothers and sisters, until we divorce ourselves from all of this European materialism that we swallowed up because we have become more materialistic than the Caucasian. We are literally worshiping money. And there's no, why would God Help us get free. Really help us take back over the world as we once ran it. If all we're going to do is replicate European culture. Does that make any sense to you? God is not going to help you. Why would he get rid of the white man so the black man can replicate the white man? You have to go back to being who you are. And when you go back to being who you are, that's when Supreme Consciousness will come and say, okay, my children, you ready. Let me put you back on the throne. We do not go back on the throne. We do not until we recover our African minds. I seen you going viral. Uh, you had an argument with a couple of guys, and shout out to them, I don't, I don't know their name. Daily Not Rapper crew, the Young Brothers? Yeah, kind of a debate. Shout out to the Daily Rapper, yeah, good, they, good Young they, Brothers. Yeah, good, shout good out to brothers. those guys. I think they was up in New York or something, right? New York. Yeah, shout out to WTMF Studios as well, they're my people. Um, but that discussion was about the black woman being framed as masculine, yes. as um, unsupportive in yes. a lot of ways, and just a, a number of different things. And choosing the wrong mate. Choosing the wrong and, mate. And, and those brothers feeling like, why do I have to settle for a woman who had a child by a man who was less than his best? Right. And my argument was real simple. If we as black men were on our job, meaning we're taking responsibility for the development of all the black boys in Nashville, then that young lady could never choose a wrong mate because we would never allow a wrong mate to exist. So whenever a black man says, it ain't my fault she got a baby by Pookie, Pookie shouldn't even exist. Because you don't put that on the same white people that we put the rest of this stuff on? So, huh? The same white people that we put all the systematic shit on. Uh -huh. We don't put that on them? Let me tell you why. They might have created it but they're not solving none of your problems. We have to solve our own problems. And like I told those young brothers, black women would give us so much respect if we only did one thing, take control of the boys. If we just did that, 
that we just went around to all the sisters. We ain't got a man in the house. How many sons you got? You got two. I mean, you got, I got one. I mean, you got, I got five boys. We got them. We got them. We go to the school meetings. We going to be with them after school. We checking the homework. We doing rites of passage. We taking them gun training, camping. We got them. If we just took the boys, our sisters be all right with us. And that's and that, that's in a perfect world. I agree with that. But, but why the world got to be perfect for us to do that? Because again, the black man is under attack, right? But that the, don't stop me from helping the youngin. Well, it do we if you, it do if you can't multitask. See, everybody ain't got we the kind of multitask when we be chasing that ass. Yeah, but that's that kind of multitask is self satisfying. Right, that's a self, selfish, self-satisfying yeah. multitask. So that's a bit different. You're asking people to multitask and give, not get. Right. So it's a different circumstance. I, I see what you said. Right. When we when we telling someone that's under attack to a hey, not only think about yourself, think about that other individual over there that ain't yours, that ain't got nothing. And I'm with you on the in the overall, the overarching goal. But I want to deal with the reality of it. And there's a quote that says, don't wish things to be how you want them to be. Wish them to be how they are, because that's the reality you live in. Things will be what they are, no matter what. You can't change that, Umar. You can, we can do all. You can't change it. It is what it is, bro. We can't look at it for what Question we want it to you. be. Question for you. Go ahead. Here's what I think. And, and I agree with mostly what you said there. Here's what, here's what I think. I think we as black men, and I'm talking to all the brothers in here, although not all of you are guilty of what I'm going to say, but I'm speaking to us as a brotherhood. I believe we have gotten so comfortable scapegoating white supremacy that we don't want to take responsibility for anything in the community ourselves. Are y'all following me? That's where we had Somebody, yeah. That, 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 that's, that, that's where we had as men. It's like we don't want no responsibility. It's either the black woman's fault or it's the power structure's fault. What the hell are we going to do? I didn't because, say black woman. No, no, I'm not saying you. Yeah, I won't, I'm, saying, I'm talking about for my audience. Right, 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 right. right. But yeah. I'm saying in the general conversation, the narrative, either the black woman is the f problem or the white power structure. That's most of your conversation. No, sir. Not the black woman, but definitely the white power structure. Cause the problems. But the solution is ours to make. Okay, so okay, we got let's, let's, not, let's not push these together. No, they go together. Right, the but let's deal with them separately. Okay. So we can have a, 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 a clear understanding of what, because okay. when you mash them up, I don't know which one we're talking about. I got you, about, I got you. Right? I got you. Problem, the problem is the power structure. Yes, sir. The solution lies in our hands. Period. But that the power structure is still attacking the black male, yes or no? That's true. Okay, so again, if you don't have the ability to multitask, when do you expect the black male to be self-preservation? Self but who said we can't multitask? Everybody can't, Dr. Umar. We can't say everybody can save children. Shopping. We find time to party. Saving children is different than what? partying. We find time to go on vacation. That's an excuse. We don't care enough to do it, and we need to be honest and say that. You think the same skill set it takes for me to go stand in the club is the same skill set it takes for me to help no, a no, child? No, 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 It's a different skill yeah, set. Yeah. That, I'm di speaking a skill set. Right. You're talking intention. Right. I'm saying people don't even have the skill set to raise their own children. You asking them to help other children when they can't even raise, they ain't even got the know-how to handle their own household. Okay, that means those of us who know how, Show them brothers how. We operate as a brotherhood. So that's a all different I'm conversation. Saying, Instead we, of we, casking that wide net and saying that all black men, you, you niggas, excuse me. <laughs> you guys, you guys, they put, you guys didn't put the work in to make an environment to where these people can. So I'm saying when we take that approach, we don't live in what I would consider to be reality and say that, yo, everybody can't multitask. But and my even, pushback then. Go ahead then we need to stop telling our women to respect us as men. We need to stop telling our women to, ex to stop expecting us to behave as men. If we're going to say can't, because can't should not be in a man's vocabulary and definitely not in our collective consciousness. If can you open a school tomorrow? <laughs> no, but I can in a month. Okay, I get what you said. So, you but I'm that's saying? still hoping. Hope ain't a strategy. It ain't hope. No, we're not hoping to open a school. We're waiting on a certificate of occupancy. You're not giving me a deadline on this on this big broadcast saying in a month this school will be open. Physically, yes. 
All we okay. need, all okay. we're waiting okay. for is the certificate. But it won't be, won't be. I don't know how long the city gonna take to give me that paper. That's the next step, you see. See, okay, so then. Right, but, but it's not a hope. It's just a matter of time. They gotta give us the paper because all the renovations are done. Everything's inspected and approved. You see what I'm saying? So it's not a hope. It's just when. When are they gonna give right. us the paper? Right. They can't hold off forever. Then we gotta get the lawyers involved. You see what I'm saying? Right. But I just think that we as men are not recognizing for you to say, that's a bold statement, bro. Like, what? as a man, you can't have can't in your vocabulary. We should not when it comes to saving our boys, we should. Now, that's a different, see, you, this is how good We're you are. We're talking about our boys. Yeah, but this is how good you are. You cast a wide net and say, can't, as a man, they shouldn't even respect us as a man if we saying can't, and it's in our vocabulary. As it pertains to our boys, as that's it a different. To our boys. Okay, okay. And as it pertains to almost anything, a man should be expected to do for his community. See, I can't. I, I gotta live in a space where I know everybody can't be everything. Then let us. Then we gotta stop telling women to see us as kings. Then we can't have it both ways. You can't say respect me as the god of the community, and then on the flip side, I can't do nothing about that shit. <laughs> and you can't do that. You can't have it both ways. We as men got to make up our mind. Yeah, I, I, I hear what you're saying. I'm trying to take it in. It's just for me, again, I, I just, I don't and know. And when you say multitask, it bothers me because black women have been multitasking <laughs> for yeah, 75 but, years. Yeah, and, and that, that's 100%. Raising the kids, paying the bills. What they got to do with college, black men. Open the business. Huh? What what does the ability for a black woman to be superior in that way, right? Okay. To be able to multitask in that way uh -huh. have to do with black men. Why we don't share we all do of the same. same. We don't share all of the same. No, two human we don't share all of the same attributes. Okay. I'm not saying that men, black men in general can't do it. I'm saying when we say black men as a whole is responsible for the environment. Because, they, because all black men can't, I, I think that's what a problem is. So then here's my question for you. Mm -hmm. If black men can't be expected to be responsible for the development, the nurture, and the growth of black boys, what in the hell can we be entrusted Other with? Other black boys. I'm, not, I'm saying that most black men, at least that I know, especially coming from the, we just see, this is what I'm saying, right. actively listening, right? We just were speaking about how sexy red and all of these people are in circumstances in which the first priority is saving their family. Even at the detriment, right. you just said, you feel me? Even at the detriment of the community, okay. right? We just spoke about, and I want to take Sexy Red out of it because it ain't about her, but we right. just spoke about female rap and them promoting the lifestyle that they may not even adopt and, and how that's detrimental. Right. But because self-preservation is kicked in, somehow that ain't, that ain't their fault by rapping that. Can I ask you a question? Go ahead. If black men were being the men that our community need, would there be a Suki Hana or a Sexy Red? Why not? They wouldn't exist. Let's elaborate before we, because why not? The circumstances that gave rise to those two beautiful black women having to engage in the art form that they are in in order to take care of themselves and their children, those circumstances that gave birth to this reality would have never been allowed to fester. Men control the structure and the set boundaries. We don't do that. And if we're gonna say we can at least be responsible for the boys, if we're gonna tell black women that we can't do nothing with our boys, what else should she be willing to trust us with? Do you push that off on what about the boy's father? Okay, you, you, you push it to the that. community, right? First what about all, his that, father? Okay, that's not our culture. Our culture is collectivism. If you're not there, I got to be. It's that simple. The reasons don't even matter. He ain't there. I got to take his place. I am because we are. We are because I am. See, we like the scapegoat individuals because we don't want no collective accountability. How many kids have you personally, and I don't mean over the phone. Wow. How many? Too many to count. A lot of them. Too many to count. Do you, think, do you think you've touched more children than Dion? Sandra? I think it's very possible that I have. And I'm going strictly off of the feedback I get from young men, right? Through the will of God, because I give the grace to the Lord. Right. I get messages that sometimes make me cry from young men. 
You're the reason I didn't take my life. You're the reason I didn't leave my family. You're the reason I finished college. You're the reason I came back home. Sometimes I get these testimonies from these brothers, man. I feel like they're making it up because there's no way you're telling me I influenced your life that much. You see what I'm saying? And these are the ones who I've never even direct. But then you have the ones who I've directly mentored, spent time with, and assisted. You see what I'm saying? And that's why when we go back to the money thing with the whole podcast piece, and I need to look into that because I need that money to build more schools. That's what I'm saying. That's why I have to do it for more And this schools. is why I say if the mission, the mission is... It's a lot of money even being left out there. That's yes, just sir. left on and the ground. Need for the mission. Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. But I was just going to say that's one of the reasons why the money never really factored mightily into my vision because I get paid back so much through the spirit for what I give to the people. And see that, that sometimes that blinds you or distracts me from, from even looking at the yeah, X's yeah, and yeah, the O's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Because yeah. it's like, damn, if I'm able to do that, I could give a damn about the money. You see what I'm saying? And see, but we need the money yeah. for the mission. And also, but see, that's still, that's that's you fueling the motivation. That's what I'm saying. The, it, the motivation is important, man. Oh, yes, yes. And so you live in that spot. Like, you, Dion, me, a lot of people, people, clips go viral of like. She said, why are you bringing up Dion? What I'm what I'm saying is 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 that is that and and, and again, I'm doing this because now no, let me address that. Give me a second. The reason I continue to bring up D.R. Sanders with Dr. Umar Johnson is because there's a fight amongst black boys to understand which one of these guys and why there's infighting going on between these guys. Seems like you have colorful conversations surrounding some of his moves and then half of black coaches riding with him. So my job is to try to comb through this and see if we can figure out what the issue is. You know what I'm saying? That's all it is for me. I want the information. I'm curious. Dion is somebody I know, I look at, he's motivating people. You somebody I know, you're motivating people. We talk all this black power stuff. I'm trying to figure out why is there any kind of disagreement about his mission, your mission, because you were the same guy on a 10 year mission to build a school. Nine so I look, year. nine year mission to build a school. So I look at Dion like he's on a mission. So that's why I want to come through it. That's my thinking. I want to have that conversation with you. And we had it. Yes. We just stopped him because someone brought it up. For me, my biggest concern for black men at this time is I feel like we've grown extremely selfish. I don't think black men have the type of spirit that our ancestors had. You know, you got to realize we come from a legacy where black men gave their life for the community. I mean, literally. Widowed their wife and left their children fatherless for the people. And I look at us now where I can't even stay at a black school and help build this up. You know, I got to run on to the white one. And I'm just not seeing the spirit of sacrifice that black men used to have. It is bothering me because our women do deserve better. And we can't give them what the white man gives the white woman. But we could damn sure do a better job than we are. And I think we're scapegoating racism too much because we don't want to man up. What is a complete man, in your opinion? On a basic level, yes, we got to protect and provide. I don't think we're doing either, especially when it comes to children. You got men who do it individually. Remember, we're talking as a community. See, that's two thirds of our children are being raised by single mothers. Mm. Two thirds, no matter how you cut that cake. You can't say black men are on their job. Now, one brother might say, well, I got my kids. Okay, but how many children are not your biological children that you're looking out for? Because it ain't just about your family. It's about us as a people. We have to get back to the we-ism and away from the me-ism. The me-ism is killing us. Let's talk about fundraising. Mm -hmm. what, what is the biggest donation you receive? $5,000 from a queen mother in New York City, I believe. Mm. That was the largest single donation. That's a, hell, that's a hell of a thing, man. Yeah, largest. And it was from a woman. A woman, an elder. Wow. Queen of 5,000. Did queen you reach mother. out to her? Did you ever meet oh, her? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I thanked her, I thanked her, I thanked her uh, extensively for doing that. Most of our donors are repeat donors. 
right? So everybody donates. I have elders who donate $10 faithfully every month. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Mm. Some of them did it for the whole nine years. So you built this basically off kibbles and bits. Kibbles and bits. Kibbles and kibbles bits. And bits. Kibbles and bits. Did you, w when was the first time you put that into your vocab, not vocabulary, but into your 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 whole thing? What? Hit the cash up, hit the, because at first that wasn't well, even Well, when thing. I first took the first donation in St. Louis, April of 2014, to try to get to St. Paul's College in Virginia, I didn't want to ask for the donations, man, because I had seen black pastors and leaders beg for money for years. And I said, I never want to be them. Right. But then I needed this school. So when I got up there, was the most, I still feel how uncomfortable I felt that first donation. Yeah. And then I started getting other people to ask for the donation. So they would come and say, this is for Dr. Umar, FDMG. And then I just had to get over it and say, listen, your cause is right. You ain't stealing. You know what you're doing this for. You got to start asking. It, for but it. it feel nasty. It feel. But yeah. But guess what? I still don't ask for the money publicly. Yeah. It's still when I'm going live, right. like at the lecture. I see because it's still, it's still, yeah, it's still yeah, got a feeling yeah. attached to it. Because I'm a very honest person right. in that regard. You right, know what I mean? Right. Um, but I think I'll feel more comfortable once the school opened up. Right. Because now people see. Because remember, what, we money, still got yeah. the Frederick Douglass High School right across the street. We got another school right there that we got to renovate too. So how did you go through that with people saying, "Damn, man, I've been giving money for any"? Did you have anybody? Well, most of the people who were saying they've been giving money. They weren't giving money. Mm. Donors don't complain, and haters don't donate. So the people you see <laughs> on YouTube with all this credit, they're not the donors. They're the haters. You see what I'm saying? And see what really happened. Just to give you a little bit of backstory, there was other people in the conscious movement who were raising money for different projects, and they wasn't able to raise much. So they hated on me because the people got behind my campaign. Because remember, they sabotaged my GoFundMe and everything. Oh, man, they sabotaged everything. Yeah, you lost the GoFundMe. Yeah, we lost the GoFundMe. How much money would you say you lost? Well, well what happened was when uh, GoFundMe decided to cancel our campaign, first of all, they said they needed proof that I didn't spend no money. I sent them everything, even told them to call the bank, talk to the manager. Every penny was accounted for. They canceled me anyway. Mm. So it had nothing to do with whether I was still or not. Y'all just didn't want me on the platform. Right. But what happened was i never forget it. I looked at the fundraiser and I saw GoFundMe started refunding the donations. Nobody asked for their money back. Why are you refunding the donation? So that's when I had to hurry up and shut that down and start another account and keep on going. GoFundMe was trying to undo all them years of wow. raising money. Because white people don't want you. Did you lose any, like? Yeah, I'm sure. So some, of, some of the donations uh, was definitely refunded. But you never lost in whole, like, yo, 20 grand. Damn, they just snatched that or... Nah, I don't think it was that much. Yeah. I don't think it was. That's, that's, that was like 2016, I want to say, when that happened. Maybe 17. But I don't, I don't think it was that much. I don't what, what do you say to people who say you're too hard on the black male? Well, they say I'm too hard on everybody, not just the black male. In specific, the black male, though. Because I'm going to be honest. Black men have came to me and said that. Like, man, he kind of be on us, man. Like, it's I'm like, this shit don't be I'm making sense. To. Yeah, I'm but I think to. that there's a disconnect with 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 some of the some of the understanding that you give the black woman uh -huh. in regards to the systematic stuff, and it seems like the black man doesn't get that. I same. think with the black some black men, because most of our brothers they ride with me, but some black men have trouble understanding that although I have just as much criticism for the black woman. I am not going to repudiate and criticize my sister in a public space because black women are special. And because they are special, we need to treat them in a special way. And what these ninjas do is they'll get on YouTube, criticize, condemn, and cancel black women in the face of every other race watching you do it. No other man goes public and condemns his women the way black men do. And I'm not going to co-sign that because it's wrong. You don't see Chinese men going live talking about everything wrong with Chinese women. When you ever see that? When you ever see the Latino men go live and totally crucify Latino women? We do it. And you know what's dangerous about it? Who the most sexually trafficked? Black women. Who the most raped? Black women. Domestically abused? Black women. So you mean to tell me our women got it the worst? And on top of that, we gonna go public and tell the world, we don't even care about them or want them no more. I got the same condemnation, but I will not do that to her in public.
We got to have a standard. Now, does that, does that, okay, let's talk about this. Last week or the other week, we saw the girl with the swollen face. Yes. You came out and you said that, let me, let me frame this a little different. Last week, there was a story that came out with a black woman that had a reaction on her face. She alleged that some people beat up for not giving her a number. You came out about that and kind of was critical about those men. That came out to be a hoax. We don't know that. Some people say it's not a hoax. I've seen several pictures and videos. I mean, I may, that may, could be wrong, Yeah. but I've seen several videos of her trying this, like several GoFundMes year after okay. year where she's okay. literally, oh, these guys, and this first time it's been that crazy, look that big, but she's had smaller ones where she's, she's pulled this off yeah. before. I don't know because I put up a post that a sister sent me and said, you need to hold her accountable because she made this up. And then everybody else start commenting under this that it wasn't made up, and this is what you need to look at. So I still don't know what the truth. But let's is. for the sake for the sake of conversation, if you were wrong, do you think that man? I probably did. I probably should have looked a little more into that. Do you ever because nah? Because there's nothing wrong with holding black men to a standard of behavior in public when it comes to our sisters. That wasn't even there. Well, it happen. remember now, even if it didn't happen to her. Black women are being choked out and murdered by their black male lovers on a regular basis. It's still But an this issue. wasn't that situation. It may have not been, but yeah. my point is I'm not going to draw the energy back because when, that awareness that's coming from my commentary is still very much needed out there because black women are being abused and ignored. So at the expense of the black man, though. It's because not black I'm, no, I'm you telling you, black men, no, black men are. Not that they're not riding with you. I want to be clear. Right, they're right, still right. riding with you, yeah. but they're they're whispering. Man, I kind of didn't, I don't know what that was about. No, they want the, me to beat the women up. I'm not going to do it. I tell them right now, I'm never going to do that. No, when you're wrong about nobody let her get beat up. And also, are know. you asking black men, I'm saying let's entertain it for the sake of okay. conversation. And also, are you asking black men to put their lives on the line for, for, would you put your life on the line for a woman you don't know and leave your children? Black woman? Yeah, black yes, woman. You don't right have now. a choice. That's part of being a man. Right now. Yes. And leave your daughters without a without a father. Dr. King did it. Malcolm did no, it. No, I'm Malcolm asking left. I'm asking Dr. Umar. Yes, it's part of who okay. nobody wants to die. I don't have a death wish. Right. But I understand as a man, my obligation is to every black woman, not just the one I'm married to and the ones I gave birth to. Okay, sounds good. I like that. <laughs> it definitely, I mean, because I'm saying they you know, should. If a black woman Some sees black, a black women will teach you as a young black male. Uh -huh. Now here's a conundrum. Some black women will teach you as a young black kid, don't you jump in that. It ain't got nothing to do with you. Yeah. You need to make it home to little tie tie and little run run. And I think that's appropriate for the children. But for grown men, it's not appropriate. Hmm. So he needs to rewire himself as his teaching. His teaching was you mind your business, they bother your family, then that's one thing, but what if we had that mentality when the Ku Klux Klan was terrorizing neighborhoods back in the Willie Lynch days? What if we said, I'm only gonna worry about the Klan when they knock on my door? They would have picked us apart. We had to organize. Black people are no longer used to organizing because of our self-hate and selfishness. The only way we come out of this is by working together, that's it. And even though we talk about the celebrities, we might as well lead them out the conversation because they're not going to be a major part in what we do until after we do it. No black celebrity has ever played a major financial role in any of our movements. So I don't know why black people keep looking to them. We don't own them. White people own them. They are corporate products. LeBron, Dion, they are owned by the white power structure. They're not coming over here. They will after we win. They'll come drop some money off later, but they won't be there in the beginning. We got to do this ourselves. And we should, because we are two trillion dollar people. Black people have more money than any single celebrity except maybe Oprah. We got more money than everybody else. Is that on a yearly, a annually? Annually. Yeah. We two trillion. Oprah not worth two trillion. Puffy ain't two trillion. Tr Jay-Z ain't worth two trillion. We two yeah. trillion. Yeah. So why is the people worth two children? Two children. <laughs> why is the people worth two trillion? Keep trying to scapegoat billionaires. You see, 
And, and in their defense, you know what I say? In their defense, how are you going to expect a billionaire to sacrifice a billion where you wouldn't even sacrifice a couple hundred dollars? It's not fair. They're not, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, take my school. No celebrity has donated to FDMG. And I know plenty of celebrities. No celebrity. Not one has made a donation. And I know plenty of them. Right? Is it, that's what I mean about the brand tempering. Do you think it's because of some of Man, the... I, I think they're fearful of my message. I think they're... I believe they are afraid because most of them got white people in their circles. Very few of them are, have a total black team. Most of them got white folks running around. And I think they're afraid of being associated with my name. I don't see... I, I mean, I can see... But... Once the small school gets up and running, some of them might donate then because they say I was serious. Because I think some of them was also influenced by the hate. That's the what I'm saying. Yeah. That's the brand tempering of yeah. people saying, yeah. hey, this is a scam. Yeah. Hey, this might yeah. not yeah. be yeah. doing yeah. that. Da, da, da. Yeah. And people like, I ain't knocking it, but I ain't supporting it. Right. Like, I really don't know what's right. going on. And he hard. I like how he talk. Right. I mess with him, but I'm going to stay on this side. I really right. don't know what the guy doing. Like, right, right. Dig what I'm right. saying? He right. might, he talking about snow bunny never and all kind of. Well, <laughs> like, I don't know what the guy, well, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. It, it's, it's sometimes I, I be thinking like, you know, why won't these celebrities give? Because again, everybody. Well, knows. let's be honest though. It ain't just me. They don't really give to black community Anything. They do United Way, Democratic Party, you know. Uh, 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 because uh, they won't access the power. You don't yes. got no power. They want proximity to what? No, yeah. I got a lot of power. They just don't want my kind of power. That, so I got they, black power. Yeah, they yeah, want yeah. access to white what power. What happened to black power? It seemed like that word evolved to like woke or conscious or like, and it lost people. It's like they split it up. It used to be black power. And right. it's just like a group of us. And now it's like you got your conscious foe. You got your de foe. You, you know got- why? Because a lot of black people in the conscious movement don't want to be considered black or African. So woke and all of that did evolve. You're correct. Because I don't want to be associated with blackness or Africanness. And black power. It was a self-hate thing. It's the same way pan-Africanism became black nationalism. Why did pan-African... I love you too, mama. Be blessed now. Oh, tomorrow, just so y'all know, I'm speaking at uh, Tennessee State New Residence Hall Conference Room, 10 a.m. to 12. If any of y'all want to come, it's going to be a QA and a session. She and loves like you, Dr. Omar. Omar. It's free, so just pull up. Bring bunnies, bring whatever you want to bring. Um, <laughs> bring no bunnies. bunnies. I'm just playing with you. But um, black nationalism was a knockoff from Pan-Africanists because after Garvey got deported, most of the black national leaders who came after them wasn't interested in building a relationship with Africa. So that's how the pan-African nationalism became the black. Na- We've always had a problem wanting to be black. That's why you got black people running around now and say they're not from Africa at all. I'm Native American. I've been here since the beginning. Well, that's absolutely ridiculous because every scientific uh, uh, study has proven unequivocally, indisputably, that all humanity originated in Africa. Mm. So there's no such thing as you didn't come from Africa because everybody did. Mm. We see? But the self-hate is so that you got Negroes say, I'm a Cherokee, I'm a Choctaw, I'm a this or that. Don't get me wrong, we have some of those bloods in us because we mixed with them. But having a little bit of Cherokee in you don't stop you from being an African. You don't find a white person with a, with a great-great-grandparent from Africa, and now they no longer a Jew. They still a Jew. They just got a black grandfather somewhere. But when a Negro finds out he got some Caucasian blood, he stops being black completely. <laughs> He's a total Italian. <laughs> they won't even let his ass in the church. Well, uh, so this, and this will be probably our last, last sequence. Um, I want to talk about Trump and specifically the charges that he's facing. Um, what, what, what's your feelings on the, all of the various uh, indictments that Donald Trump I got Trump a couple, a couple, a couple. Number one, a lot of this is being done by the Democratic Party because they don't want Trump available to run because there's a strong chance he wins. And now that they've turned him into a political martyr, they have just made his electoral base that much stronger. They just gave him votes by doing that. So why don't the why don't the old power structure understand that that has an adverse reaction to like arrest this guy when he's been Teflon to these, like all of these little attempts to like right. smear him, they don't work for him. Well, the problem that most traditional politicians have with Trump, even within the Republican Party, 
he's not a traditional politician. He's a businessman. Right. They hate the fact that a businessman came over into the presidential race and won it his first time. Right. See that. Now, here's the problem that the power structure has with Donald Trump. Because, you know, they select presidents before you vote for them. Mm. The problem with Donald Trump as president is he thinks he's actually in charge. He don't understand. You are an employee. We tell you what to do. Donald Trump doesn't have a political background, so he don't know the president. Scribbling outside the lines. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Obama knew. I'm just a flunky. Biden knew. Because they are career politicians. Trump think if I'm CEO, I'm CEO. <laughs> no, ninja. It just looks like you CEO. Remember, he didn't support the COVID. He didn't support the immigration. Went against CIA. He, he went against the LGBTQ. Yeah. They're like, what are you doing? Yeah. You're going against our major initiatives. So if they decide to let him win again, they're going to have a conversation with him. Because they're going to tell him, listen, yeah. you can't go against this, yeah. this or this, or we'll have to kill you. Because he exposed a lot. <laughs> he, he exposed a lot. No, that's what they do. They kill folks. And they don't want to have to kill him because he's too popular. You feel me? Right. And it's going to be clear as day that y'all Yeah, got yeah. So yeah. they're going, they going to have to sit him down and tell him, listen, man, your second term can't be like your first term. We need you to chill a little bit. Stay off the COVID stuff. Stay <laughs> off the gay stuff. Stay, you feel me? The rest of the cowboy shit you do, you straight. Right. But stay off of these things. Right. But uh, the Democrats are going to try to keep him tied up so he can't run. Now, with that indictment, what if I, he runs, he wins. Yeah, he wins. Yeah. But I'm looking at that indictment, number one, for what Trump, I, I feel like it's a, a, a global circus, right? We're arresting the president. It's just all kind of stuff going yeah. on. But I'm more examining the fact that Fonnie Willis out, out of Atlanta, which is the prosecutor, mm -hmm. she's the same person that indicted Young Thug, mm -hmm. YFN, Lucci, a lot of different people down there. Um, in regards to RICO charges. And what's happening is, is that Fani is using this RICO charge in an unprecedented way, right? There's no case law on it. And so she's casting a very wide net. I'm wondering if her charging Trump exposes the, the, the young thug and the, the wife in Lucci overreaching. Right, because I think you put billionaires in your business and they comb get a little thicker. It's like, it's a fine tooth comb they looking at stuff with. And, and I'm wondering, is there an opportunity for them to say, yo, you're reaching like you did with Trump, you did the same thing with them. And they kind of lumped that in like, yo, you reaching with all these guys, you're just a reacher. I think it's all political theater at the end of the day. I'd be surprised if he do any real time. Now, I do want to say this, because you got some black people say, you look at Joe Biden and what he didn't do. Trump and Biden are equal, or maybe Trump was a little better. I reject that, because I look at the fact that Donald Trump signed more death execution warrants than any president in American history since slavery. And explain what those is for the viewers. Uh, people are on death row. The president can either stall it. Uh, execute it. Execute him or what to pardon him. Trump signed like two or three of them his last days in office. So you're about to leave. You're not even a president no more. And you still found time to kill a few more people. And one or two of them was black. You know, so I look at that. You know, I look at the disrespect he showed for slavery, what we've been through. Anytime he had a chance to show that he didn't care about black folks, he showed it. So I can't vote for nothing like that. And for me, I don't think we should be voting for either one. What we should be doing is organizing our votes. We should have a black political union. And then we negotiate with the nominee of each party. In other words, Trump, you're the nominee for the Republicans. Biden, you're the nominee for the Democrats. Well, guess what? I represent the black political union of America. We're not a party. We're just a conglomerate of black votes, and we are pledging to vote in the same direction. There's 50 million blacks in America. I got 20 million black votes. What are you going to give me? What are you going to give me? And guess what? Whatever they promise you, they have to deliver. You know why? Because if you got 20 million votes, you dictate who wins every time. Because presidential elections are often decided by less than 3 million. You got 20 million. They're going to do whatever you tell them to do. The problem with black people, we never organize our vote along a black community platform. 
We've always served the Democratic plantation, the Republic plantation. We know we're going to get tired of that and say it's time for us to pull our votes out of both and vote as a people. That's what we need to do. But you know what? Nobody wants us to vote as a people, Brother Todd. You know why? Black politicians do not want black people with an organized vote. Why don't your black elected officials in Tennessee want you organized? Because now you could hold them accountable. So now you're going to make them fight the white people they've been having tea and biscuits with. Now he got to go and fight the snow bunny he's been sleeping with to bring back resources to Nashville. Nobody wants black people organized. Not white politicians, not black politicians, because an organized black community is a powerfully dangerous black community. All we got to do is organize, y'all. But we got to stop being lazy, complacent, and we got to stop thinking we could do everything on social media. That's another issue. One thing I respect about the Jehovah Witnesses, mm. you see them on YouTube recruiting? They, do you see the Jehovah Witnesses on TikTok recruiting? Uh-uh. They still knock on your door. The Jehovah Witnesses have not changed their street, street, street strategy. I got a speech and language impairment. <laughs> street strategy yet, they still knocking on doors. Why we don't knock on doors no more? We want to do everything with Twitter fingers. They can't do that. You got to get in black people's face and make them feel you and let them know that you're sincere and then they'll come out for you. We got to go back to old-fashioned street organizing and we got to organize that black dollar. I don't care how much we march. I don't care how much we protest. Until we organize the black dollar, we'll never have black power. The dollar equals power. You got to organize. Last thing. You are one of the best speakers. It's probably my third or fourth time saying that because, again, I study this, so I, I know what it takes to do it and... and um, you're one of those guys. Who would you put, you, you, I've heard you say before, you, you feel like you're the greatest black speaker, period. Of this day. Of Not this history. day, yeah, of this day. Not history, yes. Dr. Umar Johnson versus Farrakhan. That would not be fair because in all due respect to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, he's in his 90th decade. To put him against me at this time, it wouldn't be fair. But he is a... But oh, he's, he's still, still living. No, he's still a great speaker. Don't get me Are wrong. you saying that because you, you, you feel like your youth outwits him? Or are you saying that because his, his, his uh, experience, it just isn't fair because he's been doing it much more longer than you've been doing it? For me, I would personally consider it arrogant to compare myself to an elder. Period? I, period. Oh, oh, so how can you, so yes. how can you make the, the, the statement that I am the greatest speaker of this day. That's, that's well, a yeah, comparison I, indirectly, right? Well, you could say that, but I would not include elders in that conversation. For me, they are a protected class. So they're not even, they're not even considered in that conversation, right? Like Jesse Jackson, in his youth, he was one hell of a public speaker, you right? Minister Sharpton, a great speaker, okay? Uh, Minister Farrakhan, a great speaker, but they're elders now, so I wouldn't want to compare myself directly to an elder. Now, if you say- Sound there, like you, you're running from the smoke. I'm going to be honest. No, no, but they're elders. Right? Sound like you, but, and but, you a bad man, no, listen, boy. Listen, I ain't listen, never listen, heard you about that like that. Put them in their prime. Put them in their prime. Yeah. Right? And I, I've had the opportunity to see them all speak in their prime. Now you have a conversation. Mm. Who would win? I don't know. I know I would hold my weight with any of them. Yeah, of course. Of you course. know what I mean? Now, I putting them message, against each other, what about that? Like Jesse versus Farrakhan. That's prime. Because in his prime, Jesse was a bad man. I never. I need to go watch Jesse. I didn't know Jesse was hard a bad yeah. man like that. Even at the Million Man March, I thought his energy, maybe not necessarily his message, the message was that, but the energy behind it, mm. it was a very, he was one of the ones I remember the most and I was out there. Mm. You know what I mean? So Jesse, Jesse was bad. But remember, he, he studied King. Right. Farrakhan he was up. Malcolm. You know King I mean? so was hard too. Yeah, it, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. So. But if you if you go on historically all time, yeah, I don't think nobody's beaten Garvey, Douglas, and King. Do they have any videos on YouTube? Uh, where, few. where did you where are you hearing this stuff at? Uh, well, with, with Garvey, there's some audio of Garvey. King, obviously, yes. Uh, and, and and Douglas, you can't get his audio, but you can get renditions of his voice done by people who heard him speak. Mm, okay, okay. You know, and that's okay. how, you know, he had the baritone and the slow, strong right, delivery and that right. kind of thing. Yeah, I think Garvey and Douglas were the two greatest of all time, not just because they're my two, you know, favorite ancestors. And then I think Dr. King is right there behind him. Right. Dr. King's style was so different from anybody else. Yeah. You know what I mean? He had Dr. that cadence, King. too. Yeah, he was born to do what he did. Yeah, he had that cadence. All three of them. Well, you could tell the ones who were selected by the universe. You yeah, tell. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's Dr. Part of King was born to do. That's why Dr. King finished high school early, finished college early. Why was Dr. King life moving so right. fast? 
because he has responsibility so much to do in a little bit of time yeah. to do it. Wow. And that's why in African tradition, we always talk about knowing your purpose. All of us negotiate a purpose in heaven with God before we incarnate. Mm. And this life is about you finding what is your purpose. What is your purpose for being everybody in this auditorium? You got a reason why you exist. And it is a divine reason. And you're supposed to spend your life finding and fulfilling your mission. And this is why if you find yourself not being happy, even though everything you have around you says you shouldn't be happy, you're probably not fulfilling your mission, right? You might be a multi-billion dollar businessman, but you was not sent to this world to make money. You might have been sent to this world to make other people feel better about themselves. So this is where a lot of us end up being unhappy and feeling like, what's wrong with my life? I got money. I got you know, beautiful wife, I got a nice car, nice house, job I don't want, but I'm not happy because you're not fulfilling your mission. God don't care about the checkbook. God don't care about the bank account. Why were you sent here? If you made it through your mother's womb, if you came out of that vagina, you have a reason for being here because not everybody makes it out. All right, it's up there podcast. Y'all take that game and do something with it. I thank every one of y'all from the center of my soul for being out here tonight. Great conversation, Dr. Umar Johnson. Definitely going up on YouTube. And uh, just to let y'all know, tomorrow at a new residence hall conference room, I'll be speaking from 10 to 12 in the morning. It's early because, you know, the game is in the afternoon and I will be going to the game. I haven't had a chance to go to a lot of HBCU football games, so uh, this is one and I'd rather be here than Boulder, Colorado. Um, <laughs> And let me give you my phone number in case any of y'all ever need to reach me, especially parents about your children if you got issues and things like that. And if you work with, you know, uh, distressed populations, if you ever need me to come and talk or do a seminar or workshop, let me know. I'm a distressed population. Cut it out. 215-989-9858. Again, that's 215-989-9858. And I will have copies of my book. Uh, on deck tomorrow, Black Parent Advocate, The Art of War for Dealing with America's Public and Charter School. So if you're raising children and you don't have a copy of that book, you might need it because there's a lot of information in there, a lot of sample letters you can use to protect your child from the special ed assault and the ADHD con game. No drugs and no IEPs. IEPs don't help nobody and drugs don't do nothing but destroy the mind. Stay off it. And for my parents that are autistic children, stop getting those autistic children evaluated at two and three. They're too young. You can't prove autism at two. They might have some of the features, but you can't be sure until they're at least five or six. The reason the school wants you to test them at two and three is they want that money. It's all about the money. They want to start the money. You tell them, uh-uh, I'm just going to watch my baby, let him grow. Next year, I'll check in with you. If I, start, if I feel like he's autistic, I'll let y'all know. But we're not testing him because y'all feel. We got to test him because I feel. Make sure you understand you are in the, and you, you're in the driver's seat. If you don't sign, they can't do nothing. Even if your child is in special ed, I keep telling y'all that. If you don't sign permission, nothing can happen. You are always in charge. Also, it's up there podcast. Everybody go subscribe. This interview has some behind the scenes stuff will be coming out. Our next event is with Kevin Gates. Um, I don't know if it'll be here or somewhere else, but we're working through that. It's already locked in. So anyone that RSVP to this, watch out for your email. You'll get an email, maybe a location change, it may not be. But if you're here tonight and you want to be at the next one, I salute you. I appreciate y'all. It's up there podcast. This thing is going to keep getting bigger and bigger. Um, got a lot of love from the community, a lot of love from the city been supporting me. So again, thank y'all. I paid for this out of my pocket, right? And I am kept it free. This is very important y'all understand because I didn't have to do that, right? Um, but... I appreciate y'all. appreciate TSU. This conversation was great. I'm sure to do great on YouTube. You know, all the banter and all of that. You know, this is a show, so we got to we gotta interact with each other on a certain level for things to do what they need to do. Yeah. It's a business at the end of the day. But thank y'all. I hope y'all got something from the conversation. I go by Loon, the great Dr. Umar Johnson. We'll see y'all next time. Yes, indeed. We need more culturally in tune podcast. It's up. It's he can talk for 17 hours and I'm sure you won't run out of things. Big Lou! He's a good interviewer. He's amazing. Oh, where the f*** did he learn this stuff? My brain is so focused.